You are now looking at the original, the first laser. It used a synthetic ruby as the lasing material. It now rests as a memento on the desk of Dr. Theodore H. Maimon, the man who developed the first working laser and opened the door on a future of incredible possibilities. It was like in many other fields of physics, Albert Einstein, who laid the foundations for the technical development of the laser when he published his theory of stimulated emission in 1916-17. But it would take quite some time for his proposal to be experimentally confirmed. In 1954, the American physicist Charles Tones built the first maser, a simplified precursor of the laser, which emitted microwave radiation with wavelength in the 1 meter to millimeter range, but not visible light. The Soviet researchers Alexander Prokhorov and Nikolai Bazov came up with a design for a comparable apparatus. Modifying the maser to emit light waves in the few hundred nanometer range required the use of a different architecture. Towns and his colleague Arthur Charlo thought of adding a system of twin light reflecting mirrors. Also Gordon Gold, an American physics student, has developed a construction plan for a photon copier, which he referred to as a laser in his notes in 1957. But another American, Theodore H. Maiman, won the race when he successfully tested the world's first functional laser on May 16, 1960. He described the breakthrough in a manuscript that was submitted to the journal Physical Review Letters for publication, but the reviewers failed to recognize the significance of his achievement and the paper was rejected. Maiman finally published his findings in Nature. The edited version consists of two simple figures and fewer than 300 words and unlike many modern submissions, there is no concluding paragraph announcing the many scientific and technological advances the finding may lead to. Maimon missed out the Nobel Prize. The Nobel Committee chose to honor the pioneers of the Maser and awarded the 1964 Nobel Prize in Physics to towns Prokhorov and Basov. Nonetheless, Maiman received numerous academic honors and benefited not least from his own invention when he underwent medical laser surgery in Munich in the year 2000. Hi, I'm Matt Weidman. I'm a group leader working with Professor Ferenc Krauss at the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics near Munich, Germany. It's a great pleasure for us to have on loan the very first laser. The, as you know, the first laser was made in May 1960 by Theodore Maiman in the Hughes Research Laboratory. And with it, um, a beam of coherent light was produced in the visible region of the spectrum for the first time. This was based on a synthetic ruby crystal as the gain medium. This is a three-level gain medium um, that was, was optically excited by a flash tube um, such as this one here. Uh, both the flash tube and the gain medium are then mounted inside of such an enclosure to allow you to put a high voltage across the flash tube. Um, because the, this gain medium can store energy for a relatively long period of time, so in the upper state 
uh, of this three-level system for milliseconds. Um, it allows for quite efficient optical pumping of energy using a flash tube. The light that's emitted here in either direction from this enclosure is then reflected off of a cavity mirror, such as one of these ones here in front of me, such that if a single photon of light, a single quantum of light is emitted in this direction, it's then reflected off of the mirror such that it comes back through the laser amplifier. And through the process of stimulated emission, you create a clone of this photon, and thus one photon becomes two. And then at the other side, these two photons are again reflected off a cavity mirror and sent back into the laser, and these two photons create four photons. And with this, you have the coherent amplification of visible light, um, and there with it, the very first laser. When Theodor Maiman presented the first functioning laser to the world public in 1960, people had only bad ideas about the areas of application that the highly focused, high-intensity light could one day penetrate. While the daily press luridly speculated on the realization of a dangerous ray gun familiar from science fiction stories, experts described the new development both appreciatively and skeptically as a solution to problems that yet to be found. But the triumphant advance of the newly acquired light tool soon began. Today, it is impossible to imagine everyday life without the laser. We encounter it every day as a barcode scanner in the supermarket, or cash cards are adorned with laser-produced holograms, and laser pointers have replaced the FESC. Whether in consumer electronics, communications, measurements, technology, industry, medicine or research, lasers are used everywhere, and not only on Earth but also in space exploration. But the possibilities of this source of light are far from exhausted. That is why experts call the 21st century the century of the photon and thus the century of the smallest light particle.